What's up guys? I am filming from my new home office. The move is complete. We are settled. Thank God. All right, next video. Paperwork needed for a flip. I know this is the boring stuff. We don't want to hear about this. We don't want to do it. I mean, I, there's some stuff I don't even want to deal with, but you have to have it. If you're going to run a successful business and be a successful flipper, you got to keep track of some serious paperwork. Things to keep in mind, you're going to need some folders. I am old school, but I'm telling everybody this, a computer can always crash. You want to have hard copies of everything. Even title companies are still going to give you hard copies of things, okay? Wet signatures, you can't have those on a computer. That's the actual signature signed by somebody with a pen. Certain documents are required still to be that way, okay? So you have to have every project has a folder, a hanging folder of some sort with nice manila folders in between that separate all of the things we're going to talk about. And yes, they're going to get pretty thick, okay? So make sure you got your printer fired up and ready to go. Loosen up your hands. A lot of flipping is actually sitting in front of a desk and keeping track of things. We're going to go through title commitments. We're going to go through surveys and ILCs or uh, uh, improvement location certificates. We're going to go through your, your coveted budgeted spreadsheet that you guys need to know. We're going to go through my most important harped on subcontractor agreements and release of liens. Super important to have. And then we'll talk a little bit about every one of those things and what it is, how to keep track of it. And that's what we need to focus on. All right. So we're going to jump in on the computer. We're going to go through those documents and that paperwork, and you're going to see it with your own eyes as I'm describing it to you. And it'll make much more sense once we get into it. Let's get started. All right, so let's get right into it. This is all the required paperwork we just discussed that you're going to need to keep track of during your flip. And there is more than you think, especially if you want to do this right and have no repercussions in the long run. First thing we want to talk about, all the purchase contracts for the buy and sell side. And what that means is you need to have your contract for purchase when you buy the actual property to renovate. You make sure you keep track of that. If you are acting as your own realtor, like I am in my case, um, I have all those documents. Everything comes electronically after closing, um, but I keep track of that. I actually, as a realtor, have to keep that for uh, seven years. So. Those are all files I have to keep track of anyway. But every one of these flips you're doing, if you're not acting as a realtor, your realtor will give you this and so the title company at the time of closing. You'll receive all the signed documents um, and everything that you need to keep track of for this house. And then the same thing on the other side. When you go to sell the home to a buyer, you're going to have the same sort of per paperwork just as the seller. you got to keep track of all that stuff. There's many reasons why. We don't really need to get into them other than to protect yourself and to make sure you have record of everything that happened on both transactions. Very important. Title commitments are part of that. What is a title commitment? So a title commitment, it's a document by which a title insurer discloses to all parties connected with a particular real estate transaction, all the liens, defects, and burdens, and obligations that affect the subject property, which is what you're flipping. It lists all the requirements that must be met before a title company can ensure the title is marketable title or to allow a loan to be placed on the property, having certain priority against something else that's on there, a mechanics lien, second mortgage, whatever it may be. The assurance of the title commitment, this is important, by a title com company provides a safe procedure for purchasers, that's you, on the front end, that's the buyer on the back end, and protecting you when you sell it, and lenders, anyone that's going to give you money to buy these things, to close transactions before the actual title policies have been issued. And in a lot of cases, the actual title policy against the subject property can take 30 to 60 days to actually transpire. So they're, they're actually giving you your title insurance the day you close on the property and then the day you sell it, it's gone. Obviously, they're giving it that day, even though the policy may take 30 to 60 days to get written. So keep that in mind. Those are really important um, aspects to kind of wrap your brain around. And an example of a title commitment is kind of what this is what it breaks down to, really. Um, you'll have a 
buttload of paperwork that comes at you on both ends of this, all right? So the title commitment, when you purchase the home, this is an example of a property I purchased years ago to flip. Address, effective date, which is the day you close and take possession of the property. It's not, sometimes you'll close an escrow, which means you may sign paperwork and money may get moved around, but you don't actually take title of that property until some date in the future determined by the contract you signed. Sometimes it's three days to allow people to move out. Sometimes it's at time of closing. It just depends on what's agreed to in the contract, the purchase contract. Um, so there's your effective date. The policy is um, issued, and then it'll tell you what kind of policy, policy it is. Most times it's an auto owner's policy. It tells you the purchase price. That's basically what the title is going to be on. And then proposed insured for that is either going to be an LLC, you know, as far as a business goes, sole proprietorship, uh, individual entity could just be your name. It doesn't matter. It's how you've agreed to take title. And then the type of actual title that you're going to get on this commitment is stated here. And there's many times I would encourage you guys to learn more about, and maybe we'll do another video on the types of title that you can get general to, so the types of deeds, sorry, I'm saying title types of deeds that you can get a fee, simple deed, a warranty deed in general. Um, there's, there's many types that you can, and it all depends on what type of property, how you're actually purchasing the property and where it's coming from too. So then next you'll have the title of the estate. So these are the sellers here. Okay. These are the sellers that are on title that are granting you to take the, the deed out of their hands and be the new buyer. Then it's gonna have the actual legal description right here. So when it says land referred to in this commitment, this is the legal description, the way it's written in the plat map, okay? And this is all broken down things again that you should probably kind of start learning what this actually means. It's the really brief part of the description that's going to be on the commitment here that actually legally describes the property, not just the address, okay? And then you're going to come down here, and these are all requirements that you have to fulfill in order to take possession of the property. And these things all can be very weird descriptions, okay? These are all things that have to be fulfilled upon uh, transfer of title, um, release of deed. And that's basically the, the sellers here have a deed from original purchase price of two thirty five, dollars And this is when it was recorded, December fourth, 2007. That's when they actually took title to this property that I purchased from them. So that deed has to be, um, relinquished. Okay. From the, from this County that it's in and then confirmation, um, that the information contained in the statement right here at reception is current. So I have to maintain that this company or my, you know, my individual name is correct and current here. I think make sure you, when you read through these things, very important that all things are spelled correctly. This is how it's going to be titled. So you want to make sure it's, it's right. Otherwise really loosey goosey things can happen and someone can actually take advantage of that. So make sure everything in here is correct and documented, spelled correctly. Um, here's the warranty deed that they're going to, you know, present to me. Um, a lot of the stuff that's in here will say that some of the requirements that will be met down here. So all these stuff, all these things that have to be met or not assured against a lot of this has to do with the liens on the property. In most cases, that's just the loan that's on the home that someone is paying on has to be, um, met. So basically, you know, they pay it off and that's me paying them money to buy the home. And in, you know, this day and age right now, that's, you know, them making some money on the back end, plus uh, paying off the lender that's on the loan. So the loan has to, you know, be satisfied is what we say. And that means paid off by whatever lenders, all the loans that are on here are recorded as liens. Okay. So that's what that's going to be shown in here. Um, if there are no other liens on the property, the only one that's going to show up is the loan itself. Um, any defects, liens, encumbrances, adverse claims, or other matters. So there's other paperwork in your due diligence platform that has to be met. Um, any other mechanics, liens, easements that are in uh, some sort of violation or an argument during your contract period. You got to make sure that those are met. Everything that comes up on the actual title that's pulled by the title company is going to show up in this title commitment. Okay. I'm not going to get into two much more depth on this stuff because a lot of it may not make sense to you guys at first. And we can do more videos on this down the road as, as you guys get deeper into kind of understanding what, you know, some of the real estate paperwork is, but that's really what a title commitment is. Um, and that's really important to make sure more than anything, 
read through them. If you've got representation, meaning a realtor, they're going to look through that as well. Just make sure things are spelled correctly, dates are correct, yada, yada, yada. All right. So then sometimes the lender will require a survey, survey or an ILC. Most cases, it's just going to be an ILC, which is an improvement location certificate. That's just to make sure that um, what's on the title is actually the same thing that's recorded with the county as far as how the house sits on the property and what are the lot dimensions to keep it in real simple Cliff Notes terms. Okay, sometimes if something isn't uh, showing up the same, um, you may require to get a survey, which is a PIN survey, which is an engineer will come out and actually pull the legal description and measure it off and see where that house is sitting. And if there's discrepancies, you're going to go off the most current survey and not the one that's filed. And sometimes that requires more paperwork and it could delay closing. So most lenders will require one thing. Usually it's an ILC or an improvement location certificate, all the lender documents. So everything, if you're using a loan, whether it's a private, privately financed by an investor or with a bank, make sure you keep track of all your lender documents. You have everything in order. And again, I's dotted T's crossed, everything spelled correctly. Dates are correct. Make sure you keep all that in a folder. I like to have one big hanging folder and then separate it with manila folders. I know that sounds archaic, but I like paperwork in front of me, not just on a computer. You never know when something's going to happen and you still need to actually have paper. Um, lien waivers. This is the, this is like one of the more important things I wanted to discuss here. So lien waivers that you're going to keep track of are for all your subcontractors and possibly if you're doing it with a, a general as well, or a project manager that's licensed as a general contractor, you want to make sure that you have lien waivers at the beginning of the property. Okay. And then a release of lien signed at the end of the property and any warranties they're going to transfer to you with their work. All right. So what does that look like? Two things. So I start with a subcontractor agreement here. Okay. And what this is, is an agreement between you and any, any labor really that you bring into this home. That's not you doing the work. Okay. Um, electricians, plumbers, roofers, mechanical contractors, um, landscaping companies, just general labor. Anyone that has their own entity, you want to have an agreement with them that basically describes the following. The agreement, okay, names of both, in this case, I have it as contractor because I am the contractor on these projects. This could say owner right here and subcontractor. The agreement is between you two. Description of work to be performed, okay? What are they going to do on this property? Date that they're going to start, owner information, project name if you want to put one, um, the address, insurance company, and this is for the subcontractor, okay? You want to have their insurance company information, policy numbers, they need to be insured for sure. And you want to make sure you keep track of that. So they're going to give you a copy of their general liability insurance and you want to keep that. All right. Anyone that's registered and have a federal ID number or a social security number registered as such. Um, and then if they're going to be licensed, not all subcontractors are licensed. It just depends on what trade they're doing. The, the trades that are required to be licensed, you need to get um, familiar with. And that's anything that's going to require any sort of real skill, plumbers, electricians, roofers, HVAC contractors, and on down the line, depending on really a lot where you live, um, you're kind of your area too, but make sure they have a license if they're doing that kind of work. Um, and then again, you want to make sure that you have any other information you can get from them for sure. Make sure they have an insurance policy, get a, get a, copy of that and record it here description like I've covered and then your payment schedule when you've agreed to pay them and, and for at what time, you know, you're going to break that up into increments, a chunk at the beginning, some after they meet a certain deadline and then, um, on down the line, um, until they're finished with the project, you do a punch list walkthrough, make sure they get signed off on their inspections. If they're a licensed contractor before you pay them their fine, your final agreed to number sign here, give them a copy. You keep the original. All right. Then you want to move on to the release of lien. So you have them fill this out at the beginning. Okay. The original sum you've agreed to any approved COs, which are change orders. That's anything that comes up where you didn't see it and you didn't agree to pay them for this type of work, but you have to get it done. You've both parties have agreed to it. So this is a separate number. And then you record all of the payments 
um, right here that you've paid them and in the final payment here. Okay. Again, this is for me, general contractor. This can be owner right here. Um, you can have the same, same category here and then the project, which is the project address and the name of the sum contractor or their company. Okay. What this does is basically tells one, the title company and the lender that you've paid these guys in full for what you've agreed to do, what they've agreed to do for you at this project. They go and they sign this when they're paid in full and they have this notarized. So it's obviously their signature that they've proven, you know, they've signed this in, in their name. And then they give you the original and keep a copy. This shows that you've paid them in full and you do not owe them any more money at the end of the project when you get ready to sell the home because you don't want them to come back with a mechanics lien and slap it on the, on the title, on the deed. And there at that point, you would not be able to sell the home until you've, if you've paid them in full and you've you paid them toward the agreement, okay? Sometimes guys get real shady. It's BS. They'll come try and squeeze more money out of you. And if you have this agreement, they can't go and make some num number up saying, oh, you still owe me more money. I'm slapping a mechanics lien because it's really easy to file one. And all you have to show the county or wherever it's recorded that you have this notarized by the subcontractor. You've paid them in full per the agreement. You're done. There's nothing they can do to remove the release of the remove the actual mechanics lien um, and you're moving on. This is really important to have. Make sure you guys do this in the subcontractor agreement every time. Trust me, don't get caught with your pants down, all right? So they may provide you with warranties on certain work like roof, um, brand new mechanical, stuff like that. If it's electrical, maybe a, a new panel's been put in, you wanna have a warranty on that stuff. Make sure you get it from them. Your budget spreadsheet, which is from the last video. You guys know what this looks like now, okay? You wanna keep track of this. Fill it out. Every time you make a transaction, keep your book work up to date. It's I can't harp on this enough. Make sure you're doing that, okay? Just like we talked about before, this is just one of the several spreadsheets that are available um, off my website. You know, you can email me as well to get them. Shane at BaileyCustomHome.com. Uh, go to BaileyCustomHome.com, and you can find that on the on our website as well. Um, really make sure that you have this up to date all the time and you're keeping track of your actual costs. Super important, okay? You guys know what that is already. Any plan sets um, as required by permitting. If you're, you know, you're doing stuff that requires permits, you're gonna need plan sets to submit to the city, the municipality that you're building in and remodeling in. Anything that's needed, make sure you have the original contractor copy of those. Pictures, pictures, pictures. I can't stress enough. It's so important, especially for marketing purposes. Take pictures the day you start the project. Keep track of progress from literal rough framing, depending on the project you're doing, through drywall, paint, everything that changes. You want to keep track of that and obviously go out and get professional photos once the project's done so you can showcase them on the listing. That certainly helps. And then you have those to provide uh, as you go on down the road, especially to the current or, or sorry, the future buyers. Specification sheets, so spec sheets. So really anything in here that you would have to have or you wanna keep track of um, for things that you did to the home. If you've got new appliances, they're gonna have spec sheets. If you've got, if you did a bunch of painting, you wanna keep track of all of those color codes, even if you have leftover paint. Um, mechanical, if there's new mechanical, you're gonna have spec sheets on that. And even with plumbing, you know, certain features, if you did a tankless water heater, all that stuff you wanna keep track of because you're gonna be asked those questions at time of contract when you get ready to sell the home. Make sure you have as much documentation as possible on that. Like we talked about just a few minutes ago, permits. If you're, if you're doing work that requires permits, make sure you do. Don't skimp around that stuff either because guess what the, the future buyer is gonna do? They're going to ask you what work's been done. You're going to brag about it. They're going to go, cool, let me see the permit. You're going to go, oh, crap, I don't have any. Guess what they're going to do, especially if they have a smart realtor. They're going to squeeze your ass for it. Well, you didn't pull permits. Oh, that's going to be a problem. I'm not going to pay this price. I'm going to pay this price, and there's nothing you can do about it. If you have to pull permits, if it's required, pull them, okay? In that case, you have an inspection card. and depends on what state you live in, what city you're working out of. Everything's different, but they have a record of every inspection that's been looked at, 
what's happened to the inspection, and then once it's passed, they sign off on that card, whether it's electronically or a piece of paper that you stick in a window, keep track of that, have record of that, and then have the final inspection signed off. Um, people have asked me, you know, do I keep track of, or do I need my certificate of occupancy or CO? You only need that for new construction. So literally, if you're building a brand new house, which obviously is not a flip, that's when you get a CO. Everything else is a final inspection. That means you've been signed off on all of your other inspections and the, the actual final inspection, but they walk through and check for CO detectors. Everything's working. Lights are on. Um, you actually have doors that lock in the house, blah, blah, blah. They sign off on that. And then you have that. Keep that original and give the new buyers a copy. Phone numbers of neighbors. So when you start a project, go around in the neighborhood, knock on doors, let them know you're going to be working on a house down the street, introduce yourself, pass out your card, get their information, tell them if there's anything they have questions on, they call you first. Don't let them go crazy. There's snoopy neighbors everywhere. Make a good report at the beginning with all the neighbors and you have record of their phone numbers, you may even get a lead from that later on. They're going to come and they're going to snoop anyway and see what you're doing. They might as well know who you are and you might as well be on friendly terms with them. And who knows? You call them afterwards, it could be a lead for the, for the next project for you. Okay? So that's the stuff you need to keep track of, the most important things at least. Um, like I said, there's, there's other stuff within these categories that we can go into detail on. I'm not going to do that in this video. Uh, just make sure that you have this dialed in. Okay, guys? Okay, that's it for this one. I appreciate it, guys. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Uh, leave a comment. Hit that like button, please. Appreciate all the support. Um, Built by Bailey's is going to crank out some more videos. Colt Real Estate, uh, make sure you haven't subscribed to that channel. Hit that like button. Leave your comments below there. Hit me up on Instagram, at Shane Bailey Builder. Uh, hit up Lending Tips on Instagram, at lending tips and make sure you are subscribed to all the channels. We'll be back for the next video soon. Thanks guys.